you said you had no expectations. At what point did you realize I might win this whole thing? Realistically, I think it was probably around the top, somewhere between like top 10 and like top three, I thought I could have a shot. Because when I made it to top 10, I was like, holy crap, I'm in top 10. Like this is, it's live TV. It's, it's huge. People are starting to, you know, recognize you. And I, I felt like this is, this is, this is big. This is really big. But at some point, you know, people started leaving the competition and be like, well, she's amazing. How could she leave? Oh, he's awesome. I was sure he was going to make it to the final. And you get, you know, you get stuck in that bubble where like, you know, you, 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 you share this, this experience that is so unique and so that you can't prepare for. Um, yeah, I think somewhere between top 10 and top three. I can't pinpoint the exact moment. Yeah. And at that time, it was the number one TV show in Canada, period. So there was 2 million people tuning into every single episode, which is, I mean, you can't pay for that kind of free promotion as a musician. So whether you won or not, it 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 would really get your name out there for future gigs and opportunities. Um, it, do, I, I guess for those that aren't familiar with the inside of the competition. So we just see these musicians singing and some move on and some win and whatever, but it's not all fun and games. It, it is grueling it, uh, long hours. You don't get that much sleep every night. Um, you don't necessarily get to choose the songs you want to sing during the competition. Like it's from a predetermined list. Um, is there anything you can share with our listeners about more of the boot camp aspect of before you make it to the final, like top 22, where it slows down a bit? Can you talk about maybe, you know, making it through to say the top 200, top 50, how grueling that is? Okay. I remember that week vividly, like vividly. Um, so when you make it to the top uh, 200 you there's this period of time where you're not allowed to talk about it. Like, you know, you're not allowed to um, divulge that you've been selected. So I would go to work at the post office and I would say like, oh, they're going to call us. Like, they're going to let us know later. I'm waiting. I don't think I, I made it. You're not allowed to say like, yeah, I made it. I have a golden ticket and I'm, um, I'm going to Toronto on the week of, you know, May 20 something. So <laughs> there's this whole period of time where you're not allowed to talk about it. It's really, really tough. Um, and the, the week in Toronto, it was actually Mississauga. Uh, it was the Square One, I think. The mall? The mall Square One? Center. Oh, the, the, um, uh, the uh, Living Arts Center? Yeah, the, the one Center. across from Square One. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. So that's where we were. And then we were at a hotel nearby. Um, it was four days, if my memory serves me right. So I say a week, but yeah, four days. And you said it, you don't get a lot of sleep. You, it did, it did feel like a boot camp. You get there and you've got excitement, um, anticipation, apprehension, nerves. Um, you meet all sorts of people. Some you click with right away. Sometimes you don't, sometimes you clash. So the first day is a whole day of you wait, you know? You know that expression hurry up and wait hurry up get ready like 6 a.m and then you're you're um everybody convenes in like a um a big convention center and there's hundreds of people i mean top 200 200 people um and then you have to wait till the end of the day they, they brought you in groups of 10 i think to get on stage in front of the the, the judges and then you get to sing like a snippet a cappella, no music you get to sing, sing a snippet of something that you choose and then at the very end, oh dear Lord, I am on do not disturb. There's no reason this should sound. I'm that so is sorry. all good. That is all good. No worries. Anyway, um, it is on do not disturb. I don't know why. It, Someone is disturbing. Yes, I don't get it. Um, anyways, so yeah, it's um it's really grueling. And then the second day they put they pair you with somebody like they, they give you five minutes to find a partner around you and then you have a pianist that accompanies you so and they do like a pre-selection of songs and then you have to choose something that you know you have to learn that night you have to like cut into your night your your hours of sleep to like rehearse with somebody that you just met and then the third day is groups 
So it's groups of three or four. Then you have to like become a musical director all of a sudden and be like, okay, you do the verse, I'll do the chorus. Which harmonies? Are you a soprano? Are you uh, an alto? Which part do you want to do? Oh, I know this part well. And it, everybody wants to showcase themselves. So there's a lot of egos that come together. And anyways, it was crazy. So on the fourth day, you're back to doing something solo. So you can choose from a list and you do it a cappella. And then at the very, very end, they lock you in like different rooms. And then you have to wait because the judges come in to let you know that the whole group is going through or the whole group is going home. It is like a, it's a roller coaster. And, you know, when you're high on adrenaline like that, you can, you can make it through a week like that with barely any sleep because you're just, you're focused. You're, you're, you you you've got your eye on the prize. You're just nerves or what are keeping you awake. And I just, again, when I, when I auditioned, I had this really no expectation, nonchalant kind of approach, but going through that week, I was like, okay, now that I'm here, like, I'm not going to do this half ass, you know, I'm going to go all the way. I'm going to give it everything I got, which is, you know, I'm, I'm still like that. I'm an all or nothing kind of person. I'm very just, you know, no half measures. Um, and yeah, at the very end of the week, they came up, they came in and they said, you're all going through. So two groups of 11, top 22, and they, they're like, okay, you're coming back, you know, next month and we're going to start filming and you're going to be on TV and this is it. Like you guys are in. So in four days, your fate is decided. It was insane. It was indescribable. Like what a feeling. And I was, I was 19. Like Technically, yeah, I was an adult, but I was a, I was a baby. I was a child. I was, you know, you know, you've got your whole life in front of you. I was just like, let's do this. This is the experience of a lifetime. And I still, to this day, it's definitely looking back. It's the experience of a lifetime for sure. And was that amount of success overwhelming at 19 or did you feel like you were ready for it? Um, it didn't feel overwhelming at the time. It felt surreal in a good way. It felt like a dream come true. It felt like, I don't like without sounding pretentious, it sounded like deserved. It sounded like it felt, sorry, not sounded. Um, it felt like this, I'm like, this is, this is what's supposed to happen. Like, this is what I'm, this is why I started singing as a toddler when I was two, three years old. This is why um, I spent so many hours, you know, working on my craft, taking, you know, singing lessons, doing musical theater, going from audition to audition. Um, you know, I was working with uh, with an agent at a very young age. Um, I was starting to open for like big Quebecois artists at like summer festivals and stuff. And I felt like, this, this is what I want to do. Like, this is, this is what I want to do with my life. So I felt like it's finally here. It's a dream come true. I felt like I wanted to hang on to it really, really, really tight. But at the same time, I, I kind of wanted to prepare myself for, and there's no way to prepare yourself for that either, but I knew it wasn't going to last forever. Like, I know that you can rise to fame really quick, but you can come down just as quickly, but you know, you know how it is. You're 19. You, you think you're on top of the world. You think you're invincible. You think you're you think you're very mature and reasonable, but you haven't lived life yet. You know. So, you know, a after a few years, when I started to be hit with the realities of the of the industry of the of the um, the aftermath of winning a competition like this, because when you're it was like a slingshot really, really high, really, really fast. It was a whirlwind for a couple of years. You know, I was just like, my schedule was completely booked 24 um, seven. But you know, I enjoyed the ride. I, and I, I would, I would do it again. I, I don't, I wouldn't change a thing. I would, you know, I absolutely no regrets, even though it was a lot. I hope to, that answers your question. <laughs> to, to show how improbable your win is, there was, about 10 to 15,000 people that auditioned every season. So when you think about it, if we just lined you up with say 10 to 15,000 people and it was like, okay, here's the competition start. And it's like, they just, people start singing. It's, you would think it'd be 
virtually impossible to win that competition. There's just so many that even if you're great, it's like out of 15,000 people, there's got to be someone else that picks a better song or is on a better day where their vocals sound better. So just when I think of it that way, you know, think 10, 15,000 people, it's like you're in like a sports arena and the arena is full. There's that many people across Canada. And then at the end of it, there's just you and you won. So uh, I just wanted to kind of paint that picture. And I, I think it's, you know, when you think about it at the start, it seems like, oh, this is impossible to win. But all you had to do was all you had to do. I'm making it sound like it's easy, but, but it's <laughs> it was just one audition at a time. You know, you were there in Ottawa and you you did your song and you moved on. And then, you know, and it, it was just one opportunity at a time, one song at a time. You were as ready as you could be. You chose the right song, good performance. And I guess that's how how I look at it. It's like just through consistency and good song choices and personality and and these things, you, you ended up doing. You did the damn thing. You went all the way uh, through and won it. It's so. crazy when you think about it. I yeah, like, and that's how I felt too. Like, I I think my year it was like thirteen. I think thirteen thousand was the magic number. But yeah, thirteen thousand something people auditioned and. I remember looking around just seeing like, and of course, again, I was really, really young and I was comparing everybody to me like, oh, you know, she has an amazing voice and she, you know, looks a certain way and oh, this guy looks like a rock star. He's going to go all the way for sure. Like, you know, you compare, you compare. And that's the nature of, you know, being a human being. Like we tend to compare ourselves a lot. And in an industry like, like performing and music, it's a very, very competitive, you know, industry. So it is crazy to think about. And, and I felt like there's no way, there's no way. Like, I'm just like, I knew, I knew I was talented. I knew, I knew I had confidence in my voice and in my, you know, I was used to performing. So I knew, I, I knew I could do a good job, but. There's it, lots of talented people. You exactly. Know? Like what made, what made me so special? What made me different? Like, and, and I guess, you know, my stars were aligned that, Anyways, it's it, it is mind blowing to think about. So thank you for bringing me back to that to that time because it makes me appreciate it even more. And so there there were only six seasons of Canadian Idol. So there are only five other people that truly understand what you've gone through. And I have kind words from two of them. So I have two Canadian Idol winners that sent in some oh, kind yes. words. So you you won season four. And yeah. you inspire the following two to go on and win seasons five and six. So I have kind words from Brian Mello and Theo Tam. So Brian yeah. says, Eva, what an amazing human being, a class act, and one of the kindest people I've met in the music industry. Not to mention that voice, superstar on and off the stage. So that's Brian Mello, uh, who just became a dad in the last few days. I know, so that's Brian. I know. And then Theo Tam says, Eva is the uh, the epitome of grace. She is one of the wisest and most talented people I know. I'm so thankful for our friendship. She has been an anchor for me in my own sobriety journey, and I couldn't be more proud to call her a friend. So that's from Theo Tam. Oh my God, bless both of them. That is so amazing. You're so sweet to 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 to, to transfer these messages to 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 me. I'm so I'm blushing. <laughs> that's amazing. That's so great. Thank you so much.